Hi, welcome to part 7 analysis and design of a flyback uh, converter. Uh, here you see a picture or a scope plot of uh, the flyback that I just uh, prototyped. And uh, all the other lessons, uh, video 1 through 6, and then uh, going through the step by step where you analyze it, how to analyze it, and then how to design a flyback. And then in the last uh, part, I uh, showed how to wind the transformer. I have the transformer right here. But before I go there, let me go ahead and uh, just do a little recap of video six. Okay, hopefully this comes out. Okay, the recap of video six was uh, prior to, uh, to video six, I had been using the assumption that the duty cycle was gonna be uh, D would be 0.5 and also made the assumption that the efficiency would be 100% but because we're using real components uh, there's going to be losses in the components and also because the PWM that I'm using or will be using uh, it has a maximum duty cycle of uh, 0 0.46 so I did the analysis using these two uh, uh, parameters and uh, wanted to see how they affected uh, the design. Anyway, uh, once you have these two factors, I went ahead and calculated the input power. Uh, since the output power is supposed to be uh, 6 watts because it's 12 volts times half an amp, which is what uh, I designed it for, uh, the output power is going to be uh, 6 watts. So if you divide that, the 6 watts, uh, by the efficiency you should have approximately an input power of 7.5 watts okay once you have that you can go ahead and uh, divide uh, that the input power you can divide it by your minimum voltage okay the minimum voltage that I designed the uh, the flyback uh, is 24 volts so I ended up with 312 milliamps okay once I have that, I converted it into peak, and, uh, and if you need to, you can view video six. I uh, go through the steps by steps, and once I have the video, uh, the the peak current, I went ahead and uh, calculated what the inductance for the flyback was. In this case, it's a 77 micro Henry, okay, and in video six, I wound it. Uh, I used a very simplified method that didn't use any bifiler or uh, uh, winding techniques or, or split the primary uh, to get better co coupling coefficient I just m made it as simple as possible anyway I also showed that uh, I shorted the secondary and I me measured the primary with the secondary shorted and I measured uh, leakage inductance of 1.57 micro Henry so once you plug it into the equation, I came up with a coupling coefficient of 0 0.9898 for the transformer, okay? So, let's see if I can change the schematic. Bear with me. Okay, here's the schematic, okay? and right there that's the K okay I inserted the coupling coefficient or defined it uh, using the K spice element and I'm used and once I did that I hooked up the diode capacitor and I simulated it by uh, putting a pulse uh, a pulse generator uh, at a frequency of uh, 100 kilohertz and the approximate duty cycle of uh, 46 and here I define the duty cycle of 0.46. So this is the circuit that I use to simulate. 
so pretty straightforward okay so once I simulated it okay I got let me backtrack a little bit this is the waveform that I got and if you notice that this is very similar to what I'm getting okay you can see uh, the ringing that's a high frequency ringing as during this part the MOSFET is on and then at that corner the MOSFET is turned off and it rings okay and the reason it rings is because there's a leakage inductance that is in series and it rings with the capacitance uh, the output capacitance from the drain okay so in this case the peak voltage is 156 okay and if I look over here the maximum is approximately 166 which is pretty close okay so then I went ahead and expanded it okay and the frequency that it seems to oscillate or that ringing is 15.6 megahertz okay so that's the frequency so we'll go ahead and expand this and if you notice it's very similar let's see if I can bring this side by side yeah it's very similar and I'll expand that and the frequency that it shows is 12.4 megahertz it's not exact it's uh, it's close it's off by uh, I guess about uh, 3 megahertz approximately okay so the simulation is very close to what I'm actually measuring okay I want to go ahead and take a look on how I'm testing it I'll go ahead and turn it off turn the power supply off and what I've done here is let me take this off what I did and it's very convenient I put some little pins on the transformer and I have them marked green so this is the primary and what makes it neat is that I can wind several of these uh, for testing purposes and I can just go ahead and insert them in okay so I can insert components which is what I'm doing right there Okay, so that's inserted and I also did the same uh, technique with the MOSFET okay it doesn't get that hot so I was able to put pins on it so I'm putting pins in there okay and then I have up here I have my uh, diode and this is my output filter okay and then this is my, my output and my output is connected to my electronic load which is here okay so here's my electronic load so let me go ahead and turn it back on so I have my electronic load and it's it's measuring 12.16 volts and the current is half so we flip that so the power is 6.07 watts that's the output power Okay, so it's very convenient to have an electronic load where you can switch from uh, current and voltage to uh, current and uh, watts. Okay, so I'll go back, set it up, and then the way I'm driving the MOSFET, I'm driving it through right here. I'm actually using my Rigel. 
and uh, you can see right there that I, I'm using the pulse. I have it set for 100, 100 kilohertz uh, with the voltage. Uh, it's actually it's maxed out. It can only go up to 10. Okay, and uh, and the low voltage is zero, and I have a duty cycle of 46 percent. So, as uh, give you a little demonstration I'm gonna go ahead and uh, decrease the duty cycle show a demonstration and I'll move this to the once place and as I decrease you can see that the voltage goes down okay that goes down I'm at 41% uh, and sorry drop to 10 volts I can drop it even further um, dropped it to 40% and it's a 9.6 so this is a good way of showing how pulse width modulation works okay and you can see how it affects the waveform see right here you can tell as I decrease uh, the duty cycle this gets smaller and this gets bigger so let me show it again let me go back to 46 this will come out okay, right there that's 46 and if I decrease it you have that kind of step or that effect okay so this shows how the power supply works very well okay now one of the things that uh, power supply designers worry is make sure that uh, we filter out any unnecessary uh, signals and one of the things that we do worry is this ringing because it can go back out into your power supply okay another thing is uh, prior to this I was using a uh, IRF 2020 MOSFET and the MOSFET that I was using was was actually this one Okay, and I had a little accident yesterday. I had the Rigel at amplitude setting, which meant that I had it at 10 volts peak to peak. So the pulse was swinging from uh, 5 volts to negative 5. So it wasn't turning the MOSFET fully on. And since it wasn't fully on, it was uh, in the what do you say uh, uh, not uh, saturation region it was in between and it overheated and it shorted out okay now this one is rated up to originally it's uh, rated up to 200 volts so in this case you want to make sure that this peak voltage that I'm seeing of 169 you want to minimize that okay so one way of minimizing that is by putting this number okay now if you review either lesson number five or six I show how to uh, compensate or not compensate but how to damp it okay so typically what you do is let me go back to the schematic if I have schematic here okay so what you do to damp that signal, let me put this up here, you put a capacitor and a resistor across the flyback or the primary. So I'm using a 660 picofarad and I believe I use a 50 ohm resistor. Okay. So here I have my 60 eight actually should be a 680 picofarad cap it's right there okay and I have the pins right here where I can insert a resistor okay so I just inserted the snupper okay so now remember it was 168 so now look at that so now it dropped all the way to 
86 volts okay so that's a big improvement so let me go ahead and uh, let's see that's a drastic improvement and see take it off let's see the ringing put this number and it uh, adapts uh, that ringing okay now uh, just a reminder that when you put a stumper it will consume a little bit more uh, of current okay or actually power okay and uh, we can demonstrate that by looking at here this is uh, Rigo DP832 right now I have it undamped doesn't have this number and if you notice it's got a, a power of 7.9 Watts, and as soon as I put this number, okay, power went up, okay, approximately, let's see, almost from 7.9 to, to 8.9, okay, so 0.6 or 600 milliwatts, okay, so this is how you test at least the transformer, okay. And then hopefully in the next video I'll go ahead and close the loop on it and show I'll show how to uh, select the compensation uh, resistors and maybe even do a body plot of the open loop response if you uh, like the video go ahead and uh, give me a thumbs up or uh, or subscribe thank you for watching bye